I'm Al Phil Reese. I'm Anna Safford. And this is Mod Po Minute, actually five minutes. We're hoping to scratch the surface of a short poem that we like. So let's get started. Well, we're on the Santa Monica Pier on a beautiful morning in Los Angeles, California, and Molly has joined us. Hi, Molly. Hi, good morning. And Anna. Hey. And we're here to talk for five minutes about a poem that we, that we like um, by Julia Block called Hollywood Forever. I'll read it quickly, and then we'll talk about it for five minutes. It was written while Julia Block was living in California. Hollywood Forever. I don't have a problem with the object. I don't have a problem with this low house and its glassy walls. I don't have a problem with blue, help me pronounce that, jacarandas. I don't have a problem with performing the longing. I don't have a problem with the procedure. I don't have a problem with the number four bus. I don't have a problem with the current time as it appears on my arm. I don't have a problem with standard American. I don't have a problem with ideological footwear. I don't have a problem with anything loose. I don't have a problem with edges. I don't have a problem with any gear. I don't have a problem with empty house, empty of furniture and words. Uh, all the words got glared out. When you're buried, you're in Hollywood forever. What's going on there? Molly, what's going on? Well, I don't have a problem always makes me think that there's a but coming. Yeah, but there's, but there there's a, a problem. problem. Yeah. yeah. And why repeat it so insistently? What's the effect of that? A wonderful sort of language poet type enumerative. Oh, it has a catalogy feel. Yeah. And of course, it turns it into a list poem. Yep. Can we, Molly, pick a couple items on the list that really intrigue you? Uh, blue jacarandas yep. really stand out to me. Are they, is that an LA thing? It is, yeah. It's a tree that blooms um, and it creates these purple carpets all over the city. So it's very visual if you've seen it. Mm. Um, ideological. So that's a positive one. I don't have a problem. That's an unironic statement. I don't have a problem with this beautiful flower. But that's not what you would say about a beautiful flower, right? <laughs> what a thing to say. I don't have a problem with this gorgeous natural effect that happens twice a year. That's a really smart comment because basically you're saying it's a poem and you get to say things like that that you would never say otherwise. And is there an example of one of these in this list that is something you would say? Um, I surprised you with that question. Sorry. I don't have a problem with the number four bus, I guess. Knowing, I mean, you know, we're in L.A. now, but I'm thinking about SEPTA. And, well, I think you know, I think in L.A. the bus situation is right. probably were much worse than in Philadelphia. Totally. Right, but, Molly? Yeah. <laughs> much so, worse. So she does have a problem with the number four bus. Or, but, like, I don't mind taking the bus. I can take the bus. I can do that. I have a problem with X other thing. Driving, maybe. Molly, I don't have a problem with any gear. Gear is such a great word. It is. And I wonder about the any. It's so all-inclusive. I don't have a problem with any gear. Gear makes me think of... Like a of, bike. Oh, see, yeah. I was thinking of outdoorsy equipment. I, well, of course. Yeah. <laughs> gear I was thinking of a bike. Like, I can, I can bike in any gear. Huh. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. I, think I mean, it, like, I, the people who are making this video, Chris and Zach, gear means all the ridiculous <laughs> AV equipment that all they the slap around right here. <laughs> and so they don't have a problem with any gear because they'll go everywhere yep. with them. There's a, there's a uh, continuity there. I don't have a problem with any gear. I don't have a problem with an empty house, empty of furniture and words. Now we're starting to get a little personal, I think, maybe. Yeah. There's a hint. It's not, I would say, it's a personal poem, but because of the list-iness of it, it kind of backs away from telling us any kind of personal insights. But here we're getting close to something. What we... What might we be getting close to, Anna? Why is there an empty house, empty of furniture and words? Um, maybe Why because you've be? just moved out, or someone has just moved out of the house and taken all the furniture and the words with them, maybe all the books. This might be where we turn to what Hollywood forever means. Molly, what is, what is Hollywood forever? Does it simply mean, yay, Hollywood, I'm always going to be there for you? <laughs> Well, the Hollywood Forever Cemetery is a really iconic place where a lot of famous people have been buried. Right. Is it possible when you're buried, is it possible that someone, that the empty house, empty of furniture and words, is because there's been a loss? Could be. I so mean, maybe, all the words got glared out. The, the sudden shift right there. 
Yeah. Um, there's the, the poem kind of all changes after I don't have a problem with an empty house, empty of furniture and words. The, the sentence continues in a way that other sentences in the poem don't. We might be getting to some trauma's probably too strong order, some, some important thing. Is it possible, Molly, that this poem is O'Hara-like? Or it's like the elegies that we admire. There's a whole series of elegies in, in our course, Monpo, where the person who's uh, uh, suffering the loss takes a while to get to what's really hurting her, you know? And so there's all this kind of... Um, uh, a kind of um, diversion going on until we get to it because inevitably we're going to get to it. What do you think of that reading that this list sort of takes us everywhere until we get to the thing that's really something she wants to say? That sounds right. I mean, I think that's the problem. All the words got glared out in the empty house. She doesn't have a problem with any of these other things, but she maybe has a problem with the emptiness. And yeah. maybe any other day, all of these things would be things that she'd have a problem with. Oh my God, it's but a today. perspective poem. Maybe it's unironic. I really don't have a problem with. I, there's, I have a problem. I've lost somebody, you know. But I don't have. A, I really don't have a problem with all this other stuff because there are bigger problems. Bigger problem right now. Oh, I like that reading. Hollywood Forever has got to be a little ironic, right? Because the person she lost is undoubtedly not, you know, Wayne Newton or somebody who's going to be in the. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Somebody who's going to be in the famous cemetery. So there's a little bit of irony. I don't know. Final thought, Molly? I think of um, somebody who's sort of locked forever in Hollywood forever. Um, you have an image of a person that is stuck here in this place and time. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the speaker wow. has to somehow leave all that behind and move on. Oh, I like that. Anna, final thought? All the words got glared out is such an amazing line. Um, and I happen to be staring directly in the sun right now. So I'm feeling that a little bit. But just that this Southern California sun being so all-encompassing that it takes away all words, too, mm. is pretty pretty amazing. Molly, we're in L.A. This is kind of an L.A. poem. Oh, it's very much an Can L.A. Can you say poem. why? The architecture and the plants and the bus. And even ideological footwear makes me think of, <laughs> you know, really ugly sandals and clogs and things that purport to be functional but actually are really bougie. <laughs> wow, that's it. You did it. Yeah. Um, wow. You know, if we came to California just to have this conversation, which, of course, we didn't. We were doing other things. It would have been worth it. So thank you both. <laughs> if you liked this episode, watch another and subscribe. And join us for ModPo, a free and open course at modpo.org.